Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, CCMB and GIS Integration, GeoWorks Makes It Simple. My name is Lindsay, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. I also have Brooke, one of our technical specialists here, and Xiaoxing, our lead developer of GeoWorks Office, who will be giving a presentation later. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Um, if you're having any issues with the WebEx, please use the chat feature to contact us. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use the Q&A feature in WebEx to submit your questions. Following the webinar, you'll receive a recording of the webinar, as well as a list of Q&A from the webinar. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Here's an agenda of what the webinar will go through today. First, I'll give you some background on GeoNexus for those of you not familiar with us. Then we'll get into the reason why you're all here today, GeoWorks for CCMB and GIS integration. And we'll have some, some demonstrations of the technology. And finally, we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So for those of you not familiar with GeoNexus, I'll tell you a little bit of background on our company. We were founded in 2009 by Skip Heiss and are going on our 10th year in business based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. The principals of our company, Skip Heiss and Jeremy Wolf, have a combined experience of over 50 years working on enterprise integrations. And we currently have 50 active customers with a presence across the US and the world, including customers in Australia. We're partners with all tier one enterprise vendors, which you can see on the bottom of the screen here. So this is our mission at GeoNexus. Um, and at GeoNexus, our entire team is committed to this mission statement. We provide a proven platform that is fully supported and maintained by our team with the purpose of ensuring integrity for our customers' enterprise data. With that being said, I'm sure you all have experienced the difficulties of maintaining data integrity of multiple enterprise systems. As you can see here, we have a few examples of systems where you may be managing enterprise data. For example, you have your GIS system where you, you're managing your spatial data and your CIS system, which is managing information about your customers, such as addresses and service premises, and as well as billing information. You also likely have an EAM, which stores asset information and an OMS that manages outage information and to top it all off, you probably also have one or more mobile systems that manage data. So really the point of this slide is that you have all of these systems that are really good at performing specific tasks, but often the same data resides in all of these systems and needs to be maintained and updated. For example, a meter is stored in GIS, so you know where it is in a map-centric context. You also want it in CCMB so that the meter may be billed against. And finally, you might want it in your asset management system so you can perform work against it. With all of these systems, your data has the opportunity to become compromised. So that is where GeoNexus comes into the picture. As you can see in this slide, GeoNexus provides a platform with three products that help to ensure integrity for enterprise data. The first is GeoWorks Office on the left there, which provides a spatial context for your enterprise data, such as GIS, CIS, or EAM data. Then we have GeoWorks Sync, which provides backend integration of the data. And finally, we have a tool called GeoWorks Sketch, which we won't be showing in today's presentation, um, but it's a redlining tool. And if you'd like more information on that, please let us know. This slide goes into a little more detail about GeoWorks Sync. Um, which is made up of three components. The first is the easy to use GeoWorks Sync GUI, which is where the administrators can configure the tool and set up synchronization rules. The second is the GeoWorks Sync engine, which is where the full compare synchronization actually is taking place. And then finally, we have our productized connectors. The ones on the left are adapters we have built today. And on the right, you can see the ones that we plan to build in the future. 
So one of the ones that I'm really excited about is the build your own connector, um, because this will allow people to build their own connectors leveraging our platform. So for example, if you have an asset management system that we don't currently have a connector for, you can leverage our platform to build your own adapter. So now let's get to the reason why you're all here today. GeoWorks for CCMB. So due to customer demand, we recently built GeoWorks Sync and GeoWorks Office for CCMB. One thing I want to mention here is that we support the full C2M suite, which includes CCMB. So you might hear us using C2M and CCMB interchangeably throughout the presentation for that reason. So from speaking with some of our customers, we've seen that there are two common CCMB and GIS integration situations. Some of our customers have no integration and they're doing um, dual data entry um, and their or their data is siloed. Um, or more often, they have a custom integration, which can be really unreliable um, and expensive and time consuming and keeps you from doing other work. So as a proven product, GeoWorks Sync allows you to remove that burden from your enterprise and focus on other tasks. So this is GeoWorks Sync. It is a backend integration tool that allows for bi-directional synchronization between CCMB and GIS. So say you want to update some meter information. With GeoWorks Sync, you may enter that data in your preferred system, let's say CCMB, and that information will be propagated to your GIS so that you can keep your data aligned. And then here we have GeoWorks Office, um, which is basically a visualization and tool to interact with your CCMB data in a web map interface. Um, and Xiaoxing is going to tell you a little bit more about GeoWorks Office later. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Brooke, who's going to run you through a scenario for using GeoWorks Sync for GIS and CCMB integration. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, my name is Brooke, and I'm a technical specialist here at GeoNexus. Today, we'll be going over a brief demonstration of creating and updating a record in GIS from Oracle Utilities Customer to Meter. Um, today's example is going to focus on a customer that moves into a previously unoccupied home and requests water service. And um, the C2M administrator will then work to update the contact information and create an install event for the meter as we have a device configured from the previous tenants. Um, from there, the field worker will activate and install the device. And once we complete the creation and update event of a record in C2M's front end, we will use Sync to create and update both the meter and the customer record in GIS. Um, so I'm just going to start by looking up the customer's information in CE2M's front end. And you can see at our service point here, that is a water residential service point, and it is active, but it does not have a device currently active at the service point. So um, we're going to go to the service point and create an install event. And you can do that by going to the menu, device installation, install event, and add. And as I already have the device configuration ID from the previous tenant, I'm going to use that. And you can see our service point ID is already populated. So here we have an active device, um, a water smart meter, and also an active water residential service point. That will allow me to set today as the installation date. And from here, I can commission and activate this install event. Okay, so now that I have the device connected and commissioned, I'm going to go to our service point. I'm also going to update the contact information um, from the previous tenant to a new tenant. So you can see that the old tenant was Brandon James, um, but today we're going to be updating it to be Ashley, the new tenant. And that's all that we're going to be doing in C2M's front end for right now. So I'm going to open ArcMap and double check that we don't already have the device in our geo database. Um, and you can see our device ID starting with 738 is not yet in our table. Um, so this is the point where I can now open sync and go through our configuration. 
Um, so this is the SYNC GUI. It's comprised of three main tabs, which is the console tab, the configuration tab, and the reports tab. Um, I can do, I will go over a brief overview of how we have our um, configuration set up. So we start with our GIS connections, and for today we will be using a geodatabase connection, but you can also use an ArcGIS online or an ArcGIS server connection. Um, you can see how simple these connection details are, and it's similar to our C2M connection as well. Um, our C2M connection is just comprised of our web service information and the Oracle information. So you can also see that I have two main data sets here. I have a C2M residential meter data set that we'll use to create the record from C2M um, in our geo database and also a um, residential contact data set. Um, Sync does do a live look into both systems, so that can cause it to take a minute to load. Um, but as for our synchronization rules, you can see that um, it's made out of six main functions at the top. Um, today, for creating a meter in, G in our GIS system, we're going to be looking at the Oracle Utilities Record Created tab. And you can see that the entity that we're extracting this data from is our D1 device table that we specified in our data source connection over here. Um, this column you can also use to select a type of source uh, typically an attribute, and this will be the field that is extracted from C2M, and this will be the um, matching field in GIS that the data will be input to. So our synchronization rules for our um, updating our contact information are pretty similar, um, except we will be working in the Oracle Utilities Record Modified tab rather than the Oracle Utilities Record Created tab. Um, you can see here how each specific field will be mapped to update its target field in GIS. And now that we have our connection set up and our data set set up, I'm going to save our configuration and go to the console to start Sync. Um, so Sync will begin by loading and validating the configuration. And from there, Sync will begin to extract the specified data um, from the configuration from both the C2M side and the GIS side. Once the data has been extracted, it will create one record from our D1 device table, update one record from our contact table, and also update our edit history. Um, so the synchronizer will update the edit history table in the data store to help, reserve, to help resolve future conflicts or duplicates. Um, you can also see here that um, the changes will show up in yellow, and if you have any errors, they'll show up in this column in red. So every time that sync is run, whether it's in preview mode or not, it'll generate a report which can be viewed by the GUI or by going into the sync installation folder. And the report will show how many features were synced um, and the total time that it took to sync. Um, and it's basically broken down by the functions that are within sync. So today I'm going to be looking at the create. And you can see that our device was created here. So I'm going to open up ArcMap and refresh. And you can now see that our D1 device ID beginning with 738 is in our table. Um, so I'll just have to click on the service point and you can see that our meter information shows up here as well as our updated contact information. Um, and that's really just a brief introduction onto how Sync can be used to integrate C2M with your geo database, specifically creating and updating two records. Um, for a more in-depth demo or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or please let me know in the WebEx Q&A. And with that, I will pass it on to Xiaoxing. All right, uh, thanks for the demo work. And uh, so this is Xiaoxing, the lead developer of GeoWorks Office. So today, I'm going to demonstrate our GeoWorks Office project for our utilities. As you can see, this is a web app builder, JavaScript viewer that we have for GeoWorks Office. And GeoWorks Office is just a widget that can plug into this Web App Builder viewer. And just uh, try to give a brief introduction to, to those who are not familiar with Web App Builder technology. It's uh, the Azure platform. Then you can plug in a lot of out-of-box Azure widget there. So which means that um, there are a lot of open source widgets that you can leverage with this existing work. Uh, JavaScript viewer, like bitmap galleries, like bookmarks, or like measurement tools, or select tools, like home extent geocoder services. 
So, and also the legend too, and the layers. So a lot of tools that you can use to help the users, help the map user to find the uh, locations easily and find the more accurate asset when you try to work on. So Geworks Office for C2M is just a widget that plug into this viewer. And at the same time, you can see that we propped a login window, but Geworks Office, we don't have our own login system. So we do use your existing C2M or CCMB system. So I already have my CCMB users here, so I just click sign in. After signing, you can see that we do have five modules. One is called Service Point and also premise, field orders, and also field activity. So besides those four CCMB modules, we do have another tool called isolation trees, which I will demonstrate later. So for the service point module that we do provide a view detail in functionality, and I'll go ahead and just select the service point that Brooke just demonstrated, which is this one. So after you select this one, you can see that we can show all the CCMB information inside this map viewer. And you can see that we extract the the address, the service point ID, and also the creation of the contact information of this service point, like the premise, if this service point created on top of the premise. And also, if there's any field order of field activities on top of this service point, it will also display it here inside of the map viewer as well. And all these data are extra retrieved from your CCMB system. And also, um, because Brook just installed a connect a meter with this service point, so if you go to the device history, and you can see that the meter information actually displayed here as well. So this is a meter that we just connect to this uh, uh, service point. So that's a view detail information of our widget. So it's really easy to map the geometry point from the map and also the related information from CCMB system will display it on the same page as well. So. Uh, Besides the view information for service point and premise, so we do have creation functionalities for field orders and also field, field activities. So for field activities, you can just simply select from map and also create an activity here. But today, our demonstration will focus on the another helpful tool called isolation trace that we provided the isolation trees is a widget, like actually you can see that it's plug into, you can enable it or disable it um, inside your works office as well. But it can help, it's really helpful to help the user to quickly locate the asset to isolate a membrane or to understand the affected areas for a plant shutdown using this tool. Like to determine the potential affected customers information or asset, customers or assets, the information is passed to actually to a geo processing service and uh, to run the analysis. And after that, it will process the result and uh, get the result back to this widget. So uh, I'll take the, <clears throat> the previous service point as well. So after we connect to this service point to this new house, and after a couple of weeks, that's the customer saying like, yeah, they notify there is a leak on this service line. So we can just simply go ahead and click this flag tool and add a flag to this service line. After that, just simply click this run button. It will pass all like the location information to the geoprocessing tool and the, the tool itself, it will process, so say, uh, put the location as an input and then give you output type. So in this output tab, and now you can see that it we have this configured to display an overview of the trace result, such as the valves that you need to close and also the hydrants and also out of service meters based on this pre brick locations 
which the user entered. And also, so you can see this information it provides the user with a better understanding of how to isolate their errors. So besides um, all those asset information, like the, the laterals that will be affected or the valves that, that need to be shut off, and in this service connection, which we configured as a meter devices inside the CCMB system, so we do also retrieve the customer information based on the meter, meter information. So you can see I just simply click it, and also it already has the customer information as, as a main contact. It has the user, the contact information, the name, and also the phone number, also the email address, the address of this contact information. So because we have customer information retrieved already, so you can just simply export this as a CS file to download it, or it just to after that you can share the full list within your organizations and um, or integrate this CS file with your alert system, like how to notify the users there will be applying uh, outage of the service. So. Um, so this is just a quick, simple demonstration of DualWorks Office. So if you have, if you want to know more details about our product, just please feel free to contact Lindsay or uh, leave. Or if you have any questions, just put the questions in the Q and A, and we'll get back to that later. Okay. All so right. I'll hand back to Lindsay. Thank you so much, Brooke and Shaoxing. So I want to end with some final thoughts to conclude our presentation today. Um, and I really want to emphasize three key points that make GeoWorks um, a great choice for your CCMB and GIS integration. So first of all, the platform is really easy to install, configure, and maintain. It replaces, it lets you replace time-consuming dual entry and custom scripts and provides a proven platform for synchronizing data between CCMB and GIS. The GeoWorks platform is also totally supported, meaning that we stay current with both the Oracle and Esri technology and ensure your integration is always supported. I also want to emphasize how important the geospatial data visualization aspect is. With GeoWorks, with the GeoWorks platform, you're able to view CCMB data in a geospatial context giving you insight about customers that you would not have from a simple tabular view. And then finally, the GeoWorks platform is all about data integrity. You control the data synchronization process, and the valuable reporting allows you to see what changes happened in both systems during the sync and any data discrepancies that may be present between your data. So before we wrap up, I want to remind you that we'll send out the Q&A with the re webinar recording, so please watch for an email on that. And I also wanted to let you know about an opportunity to come meet with our team in person. Um, we'll be at the Esri User Conference in July in booth 314, so please let us know if you're attending. We'd love to meet you in person and talk with you more about our solutions. Thank you so much, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.